Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to John and Dylan Online, a show where two gross comedians <laughs> attempt to recap internet history the best they can, doing a poor job. Ladies and gentlemen, to introduce the subject of our show, it is John Hastings. Oh my, let's all set our way back machines for 2000. It's Y2K. Bill Clinton's getting sucked off at your mom's house by your mom. <laughs> and you I was gonna mention are this beforehand. stealing internet files. What were you going to mention, Dylan? So YouTube, <laughs> YouTube literally, um, apparently, if you swear in the first three minutes of a video, then they like just murder it in the algorithm and i was yeah, like well, well maybe we'll get through guess this, again do you think sucked off uh, on the video thing i'll have to bleep that how fucking oh, you know, i really what, what kind I, of pussy bitch loser shit is this i want to point out that this program is basically just a um uh a way to audio digest the fact the internet used to be way more fun we used to just be able to eat fucking texas toast garlic bread the way dylan is demonstrating right now get some Man, texas do that on site yeah. On site, he knew this was Texas Toast Garlic Bread. Yeah, do you think that I fuck around when it comes to fucking garlic bread? I do not, is the fucking answer. This is pre-bought. This is what I made. Of course. This, this is disgusting. You should never... If you oh, paid for this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. You should, be able to, you should have to eat this naked. <laughs> that that should come with that should come with a letter from a gun store saying actually no you can't have that handgun just based <laughs> on how sad you are no i should get a gun license with if i made i made this myself someone should show up and be like i don't know who you are but you've earned this smith and wesson my friend you know what that that sandwich comes with a podcast that is not on itunes but is on daily motion you know oh, what i'm saying oh, oh yeah <laughs> daily yeah. motion oh, fuck Pathetic. There's nothing better than a guy who thinks what they're doing is a podcast, but it is not a podcast. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Come on the podcast. Uh, this is a tweet. I don't know, man. There's a certain amount of people, too. Like, I'm too young for this, and so are you. But I guarantee there's people who are like, wait, podcasts? So they're just trying to, like, make ham radio seem like it's a business? Yeah. It's what's I like, it's insane. It's basically like if cable access... Uh, became more popular and more influential yeah. than network TV. <laughs> like, it's so insane. Uh, what's the most listened to thing? A cage fighting commentator who doesn't believe in science or the moon uh, or uh, just uh, stories of what serial killers did. That's the two. That's the two most listened to things in yeah. the world. I never understand, like, true crime serial killer podcast because, like, Okay, I was into serial killers when I was a teenager. Sir, you were the co-host of a pro wrestling podcast. You worked, uh, you earned money from a show that was basically true crime minus consequences podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like the pro professional wrestling industry, no, we discovered, go ahead, I'm sorry. A thousand apologies, I'll go kill myself. All right, what if you're fucking talking, you're like, yeah, um, oh, this there was this crazy murder, and then someone's like, yeah, that was my dad. You'd be like, oh yeah, but he died. Cool. Oh, that's a great point, actually. Yeah, you're like, what are you into? I'm really into the um, uh, this murder of this woman, Janet. She was murdered mm. in a YMCA parking lot with um, she was murdered with a uh, with a box cutter, and they wrote out "piss in my mouth, Janet" in her entrails. And then that person could be like, Janet was my mom. I um, I I've been in therapy since that day. And you're like, oh, is, and then you like, but you know the but who therapist? do you think did it? Exactly. This is Who the problem with our society. Is I guarantee mom. Your mom was a slut. Netflix said so. Like, uh, as someone who last year had someone very close to him pass away quickly and tragically, it is shocking the questions people will ask you in like in those moments of grieving that are way closer to them basically like living their life as a true crime podcast, not understanding that humanity is a thing. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, your friend's dead, but at the open cast, we get she's dick. That was a question that was asked by Dylan, but what was weird no. was yeah, he did he also did it, but he had a lot of birthday cake in his mouth, so it seemed very festive. Can I show my dick? It's no one's birthday, but I just I wanted a fucking sugar treat. Okay, so I'll tell you who else like does that mean it's open fly for the dill dog? But dick yo. is uh, my balls are out too. Dylan, I want I'm putting in my in my last will and testament that you have to flash everyone at my funeral. And not, you can't do that. You can be like, yes, I can. My dick. Yes, I can. Open casket. First half. Oh, uh, top part with my face not open. Bottom half. Bottom open. part. Bottom yeah. half open. Just everyone. Just everyone gets to see what you're bringing to the party. 
Whoa. Everyone gets to see the people maker. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, just a neon sign pointing to your dick saying that's where my son came from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My old disgusting balls. Oh, but then I get like also the bloating will make your dick look bigger, right? You'd hope so. You'd hope you get all the bloat in your dick. Yeah. No, some bloat will be in your dick. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about LimeWire. <laughs> what a segue. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there is nothing more bloated than the music industry in 1999. And that bubble Ooh. was popped, baby. Bye. Uh, a douchebag uh, who went on to form Napster, give money to Facebook, and destroy a good portion of the Redwood, Redwoods forests for his wedding. Um, Napster was finally... <laughs> really? That's true. Yeah, the guy in charge of Napster destroyed a portion of the Redwoods wedding, uh, red, um, the Redwoods forest in Northern California to have a Lord of the Rings themed wedding, and uh, then complained openly when the um, uh, federal government fined him for destroying protected old trees. Yeah, yeah, and it was like it was like, and it was one of those stories. Like you can even it was it was um that all happened in like 2012, which was a very specific time when. Uh, Huffington Post was very popular, and they had uh, um, comments on their all their news stories, and that was a real fucking thing to be part of. And I remember one of the comments from that news story when it happened, which was, "I hate the fucking government, but fuck this guy." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's who this guy is." <laughs> that's here's what I really like about um, LimeWire was the file name Britney Spears XXX new I, we're, tits. We're we're going to get to that. Ladies and gentlemen, so uh, Napster uh, was shut down in 2001 by uh, the RIAA. Remember them, Dylan, um, for copyright. RIAA. The Record Industry Association of America. They're the joker oh. to LimeWire's Batman. If Batman was committing a <laughs> metric fuck ton of copyright crime and a variety of other crimes as well. Uh, LimeWire was basically formed in this vacuum. We advertise this episode as being about Kazaa and LimeWire, and that's just because we knew that about Kazaa. Week. Pardon me? Last week. Last week we We just said at the end of the episode, I have a theory. I don't think anyone listens to the end of a podcast episode. Please rate and subscribe. Yeah, thank you very much. And join our Patreon probably. I don't fucking know. Uh, And so Kazaa, Bear Share, all of these different things basically just took the um, the -the behind-the-scenes software uh, bones that Napster was, which was basically any form of peer-to-peer sharing network and they just gave you a version of it limewire was different in that they figured out a way to do it faster they were using basically the early versions of BitTorrent technology but because it was also the year 2000 on the internet the engine was called nutella with a g and you're just like oh I don't yeah know, i don't know how i don't know how that means come but i know that means come you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> got him got him well uh, someone said uh someone said this where it's like fuck who was it these these kids hacked into Twitter and locked everyone out. They just basically were in God mode in Twitter because they kept on tricking people into thinking they worked at Twitter at higher and higher levels and getting more and more passwords so that they locked everyone out of Twitter and then eventually just tried to do like a straight up like they didn't do anything fun. They just uh, fun. Jesus Christ. They didn't do anything horrible I, for the world that they could have. They just basically I, tried to do a Bitcoin scam. But yeah, um, yeah basically building up that someone said um they're 15 year olds they're 15 year olds and geniuses those aren't mutually exclusive so like people that are like yeah. 20 15 to 20 it's like yeah i mean sure they don't have life skills but just they're very good at a thing we're not good at so we should and fear Dylan, them you actually really pointed out something that's very important for this period of time to understand limewire which was this was the time when the internet was for, like for nerds this was the time when like people lived st- this was still yeah. a time where adults did not have computers in their homes and that was okay like it seems crazy to think but like i dylan and i were considered nerds by friends of ours because we knew how to get limewire on my on my computer like i had to show i had to explain to all of my friends how to use these particular softwares because they were filled with viruses and child porn and a bunch of shit that could brick your computer which they happened were filled with child porn John. it was filled with child dylan bad news about limewire as it turned out while you and i were really enjoying britney spears xxx video with kfed dot las you mean vegas like chasey lane uh, were you downloading Chasey Lane? My, I, the main one I remember getting from LimeWire a lot, um, was a uh, tanned couple with friend balcony. That's what <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> Jenna Jameson, 
fucking that captain on a boat, but then of course. it was it was like the, 40 seconds. It was 40 seconds. I've later gone back and found the full porno film where that clip Whoa. is from. Dangerous Seas is what's it what it's called. Dangerous right? Seas. Oh shit. Was, is that about I, fucking they get lost at sea and ever the whole crew dies and they have sex while crying? Cool. That's you, that would be a much better plot for what it is. Is uh, it's a bunch of people on vacation and some people get guns and then they have sex. Oh, All yeah. Right. That's they, when porn. This is when porn. Like they made that fucking. Remember that movie Pirates, where it's like, look how fucking huge this budget is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you understand why people <laughs> watch this. So sure. That's exactly that was exactly my takeaway in that time period. They're like, wow, this porno film's got like funny moments, and it's like. I'll just watch Wedding Crashers, man. Like, make them have sex. Like, I don't think I'm not gonna like gonna watch think... this whole thing jack off and then go back to watching this whole thing. Yeah. Do you understand that the people that have porn on all the time, they're history's greatest monsters. Like, do not cater to them. Needless to say, this was the internet at its most openly gross. Like, I will say inter- this though, John. Go ahead. Can I say this? Can I? I want you something? to say. It. I thank you. Please tee off. Hot take w- with Dylan God. I was at a party. With oh, uh, our friend, actually, friend we mentioned, uh, Bryn Potty on this show, and we were Woo! the only ugly people there. Everyone at the party was so attractive, they just had porn on, ironically. They were like, look at these, there's people just having sex. And everyone here was like, everyone at the party was like, <laughs> that's not how you do it. And then me and Bryn are just looking like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. and there was a like, comment whoa. where like, me, uh, Bryn went to the bathroom, and I'm like, you know, didn't really... Uh, the person I knew there was just kind of talking to someone else. I'm like, okay. And this was before smartphones. I couldn't just stare into my smartphone. So I was just like kind of wa- just being the only ugly person at a party, just watching the poor that's on first TV. Of all, first of all, Dylan, you were an attract you were the only attractive man at those party that's that party. They true. may they may have high cheekbones, but I know all of them fucking drink their own piss. You know what I'm saying? Lime wire. Anyway, John is over there knee deep in child porn, searching They're- for what he likes, me unaware. No, Dylan was not unaware. Dylan is the one who clips, did all of it. No, he Chasey wasn't. Lane, no. Getting, getting the first clips of pirates, sending it back, saying, I need to, you guys need to spend more money. And they're saying, yeah, sure, 19-year-old yeah, yeah, yeah. virgin, whatever. Uh, not a virgin. It counts, Um, is what I always say. And then they'd be like, <laughs> what counts? And I'd be like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Flood the zone with confusion. They don't know what the truth is. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not. Anyway, Mark Gordon, who, uh, by the way, if you're wondering... How did uh, what happened to LimeWire? It's now in exchange for NFTs. Anyway, um, are you serious? I'm 100 percent serious. <laughs> That's uh, like, That's sick. It, so goes LimeWire. So goes the internet. Uh, what did it start out as? Well, it started at like I mean, LimeWire was basically this guy Mark Gordon who was just a professional financial criminal. Basically, like I'm listen. Mark Gordon seems like he could be a legitimate businessman. I just think that he's. I get the vibe that he's a real douche. Anyway, he starts a company because he saw Napster and he's like, <laughs> let's do that, but uh, <laughs> with everything. And so that's what they do. You could get everything on LimeWire. Uh, LimeWire is faster. Uh, LimeWire, for the most part. Define uh, everything. So it's like not just audio. It's not audio. Just, not video, just MP3s. No, full programs. You can get video programs. games. The best thing to do, and I had this, which is a LimeWire Pro. It was even faster of a download uh, and said less virus-filled programs. And how you got LimeWire Pro is you downloaded it off LimeWire. Uh, so because- they want they were, they offered you, hey, do you want to buy LimeWire Pro? But then there was also you could just search for LimeWire Pro on LimeWire. LimeWire. And since LimeWire had put itself in the corner of like, hey, everything's just information. Information should be free. They had to be like, fuck. So, and Dylan brings us to the very interesting legal argument that these peer-to-peer services use and where it gets them in trouble is in the U.S. for a platform to be culpable for what its users are doing, it can't have another function. So the argument of peer-to-peer software is saying, hey, we're not stealing this stuff. We're just giving people the ability to share files back and forth very quickly, no matter what the size of those files are, like what happens happens. You know what I'm saying? And the problem is with copyright code is there's nothing you could really use peer to peer for, but like, why would you need a software marketplace with all these different files? If, if for no other reason than to encourage piracy was the argument and LimeWire, I wouldn't say necessarily encouraged piracy, but boy, oh boy, did they go out of their way to make sure they did not have to stop 
doing piracy for, up to and including agreeing when like the recording industry of America reached out and they were like, can you stop this? And they would basically be like, you got it. And then just not, which was a good strategy for a long time. Cause they asked last is so much of their competition. Cause their competition like Kazaa would get a lawsuit from Ryan. They'd be like, you're right. We'll shut down. And LimeWire just was like, nah, bro. That's not us. We're the, the Lime Group. <laughs> like it's fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't. They just had better lawyers, or this Mark Gordon guy had more money. I don't actually think they had more money or better lawyers. I think they just did it. Do you know what I'm saying? Here is what I'm starting to realize about society. I think people put too much of premium on assholes not giving a fuck. Like I think they always think he's got to have a good lawyer. He's got to have a backup plan. What if he's just like what? Ha what happens if I say no? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I actually think it is. And that's what, yeah. And that's what LimeWire was. Ba ba LimeWire is run by this guy. Now, LimeWire on one hand was awesome. Do you want the discography of Chuck Berry for no reason? Boom, on your computer in 10 seconds. Oh, are you not very good at using your computer? And did you accidentally click the wrong box? So now LimeWire has access to every file on your computer, allowing identity thieves to basically invent that as a crime genre. Yeah, that also happened a fuckload, um, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in terms of computer repair damage was caused by kids bricking their family computer because they download the dreaded .exe files. Dylan, do you know what those yes, are? Yes, those are programs. Those are programs and people would download thinking those were MP3s because this was a time when like you didn't like this is, sounds weird, but this that's is that's not true. Yes, that is not true. true. That yes, it is true. Only completely computer illiterate people did that. Definitely, like I had, I was being taught to be wary yeah. of computers from grade two. So, like, this is not every. I definitely knew what an execution file was. Like, I knew yeah, what a .exe I agree. was. But you and I, I'm not. I, despite my looks, I am like computer literate. Like, I'm the equivalent of. Your <laughs> uncle who would fix your car if you gave him a case of beer and he'd be like, uh, I fucked it up way more. Thanks <laughs> yeah, for the yeah beer. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, correct. But at this time, that was a premium of knowledge. I remember someone called me being like, yo, I downloaded that LimeWire folder and now my computer has a blue screen. And I was like, what did you do? And, and I remember they were like, well, I went on the LimeWire. I saw some music and I just downloaded every single one of those files that was the song to make sure I got one. I was like, oh, you just definitely just downloaded a virus onto your computer. Because while they were like you and I that were wary of the Internet, much like the people running LimeWire, people are cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Die, man. You're the die, man. So when was LimeWire founded? LimeWire was founded in 2000 in the ashes of Napster. Basically, Napster is at its height, getting so many lawsuits. This is when Lars Ulrich is making very awkward press conferences. Mark Gordon launches a um, basically a shell company called the Lime Group, under which he is going to launch LimeWire. You can get this from business documents where he got loans and shit like that uh, to launch How do you make money off of something where it's just like, hey, some teens have porn, we're going to put that on other teens' computers? It's a, it was a, he had, it basically was the advert, selling advertising on LimeWire was very, very successful because LimeWire was at, at its height in 2003, 4, 5, 6, was on a third of the computers on the planet. It's estimated based off a of- A third of the computers. A third of the computers on the planet had, like LimeWire was, because no one talked about it because we were all being naughty media pirates. No one discussed. This is the interesting thing. This is also the beginnings of our culture having sort of secret nooks and crannies that no one talks about, but we're all involved in, i.e. everyone was stealing shit off of LimeWire or getting your one friend to steal shit for you off of LimeWire and burn it onto CDs. And so this is what happened. And like literally it cratered the media industry, all of that sort of stuff. But we just, no one talked about it. It is wild to look back upon that is definitely definitely something that happened was a guy at school who had just like a better internet connection and his business was he you know you give him 20 bucks and he will make you the fucking most boss ass mix cd yeah like you have to because you have to understand and i still actually sort of stand when it came to the music industry for most of our teens we would have to spend so much money to get one good song on the album Pete, like bands sucked at that time because there was like one good song on every album one you know oh, what I no. mean? and not not only that but then you have the thing where it's like if you are like me and john and you liked music that was for perverts 
That's heavy right. metal, oh, then it didn't then exist. You, like you no, couldn't you get have a to bunch go into shit. HMV and buy it for twenty seven dollars. Every single like our new CD for, by a popular group was fifteen bucks, and that was the incentive because if mm. you were trying to buy like fucking Master of Puppets, it was probably twenty five bucks, twenty bucks. Yeah. Or God forbid you're trying to buy something by fucking like um oh my god. N- not not Pantera, but like strapping young lad, some stuff like that. Like, I like remember, anything that wasn't no, no. just it's explicitly from a major label, it was like a thirty dollar and it was like ten tracks. So you're paying Dylan a track. got me and my friend Paul split buying Never Mind the Bollocks, Here Comes the Sex Pistols, which is a twenty eight minute long C D. And it was $75. And we got, like, we got fucking fucked, bro. But this but is that, the point. I will say this. When you pay that much for something, you just have to like it. So you just like teach yourself to like it. Like, I well, disagree. That was great. I remember like I hate Metallica to this day because I remember buying Load being like, I mean, because this was my logic. This was before the internet. The Black Album. So my neighbor had the Black Album. I was like, the Black Album, that album's so good. There's no way the album after it could be bad like how could you how could you get were you i was 12 yeah that makes sense you were 12 all right continue yeah i was 12 i bought load and i was like what is this like i remember being like so what the fuck and i was like what the hell and i will never like it and i i to this day i steal metallica's fucking library every new version i mean it's all done I know it's all done now, but I still do it on purpose. I remember when I discovered LimeWire, first thing I did, every Metallica CD, boom, let's go. Every Having time. all those MP3s and you just have them on your computer, this is another thing that if this, this era was that you would have pornography files on your computer. If you have pornography <laughs> downloaded on your computer now, you are distributing child pornography. Yeah, you are definitely you a make- criminal. Real pornography. Those are the two I options. Don't, I actually disagree with you. I think the second option is you edit real pornography. Okay. But that's the only one who has it on his computer. I don't even think that the, I guarantee the and director. That's on a cloud drive. You're probably Yeah, it's right. on a cloud drive. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah, like no one. It's imagine just having. would have massive fi- like files of just like. Por- it, it was the, the best. It's dis- it thinking was about it is disgusting. Best. It was the best because it really opened up some doors of hypocrisy in my life because I was working at a Christian camp at the time. And while I was one of the cool punk rockers that had fingered Ooh. one chick. Yo, Whoa. fucking yeah, bro. There were a bunch of really holier than thou dudes. And I remember one of them had his computer in the office um, or uh, had his computer in the office because that had like a good internet connection. He could plug into the modem. I remember looked and he was downloading a bunch of porn. And he, I remember seeing that. And then I remember he was lecturing the girls about their swimsuits. And I went, oh, yeah, bro. he was you know, like, bro, you got fucking chat. I remember it was cheerleader themed. And I was just like, bro, you fucking hypocrite, bro. Uh, as God said, they'll shout yum yum. <laughs> what are you doing later? <laughs> bam boom, bam boom, bam boom. Yeah. Wanna uh, watch God. Porky's? Porky's is a documentary to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and on the third day, God rose. You know what else rose? My hard dick. I am there you go. very good at sermons. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yo, 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 Let's yo, sing yo, a little yo. song. Ooh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, show them titties. Them titties, bitch. bitch. <laughs> Get those I, milkies out. I want to say bitch was the worst part. Milkies. Boy, yeah, milkies. They're I don't care if they would say something weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. So um, basically, uh, LimeWire is, uh, launches in 2000, as we've mentioned, and it's uh, a absolute free-for-all forever. Here's some of the problems with that also. As we mentioned, people were downloading pornography onto their um, uh, computer. Also, there was no type Don't of say secure- people. People. Dylan. Dylan was not me. I was. I've, al- I've always been a trailer man, as we've covered on this show before. I never downloaded it. I would just it watch the trailers on the websites. It does make sense. It does make sense to download trailers. Me, full movie. Yeah, Dylan. And it's weird. He doesn't like the plot, but he's like, I like to. I like everyone to know that sometimes I just want to see the setup. You know what I mean? I want to see what they're wearing. <laughs> yeah. Every time I watch the setup. I, I'm not like eight seconds into the first thing. I'm like, oh, I was very disappointed. Sweet, this guy's by this. dick was out, and I just nutted to it. That's what happened there. Good. 
I mean, I was very disappointed with this behind the scenes porno film because it had too much sex. I wanted to learn about where the cameras were positioned mm -hmm. for the sex. I wanted to uh, see the lighting. But no, this is also when you would download it, pornography and uh, and then it would just be that view of just the guy's balls and you would have oh. to fucking... You'd be like, I wasted three hours. <laughs> I also am pretty hours. sure there is a couple that just put their fuck tape. Someone put a fuck tape of a couple on LimeWire because there was a video, which I've seen, that had a full Aerosmith song on it. And it was uh, just a couple having that sex. That happened the, more than once. Sorry. Had, the se had sex on the top at the top of a staircase. Like, that's it. It was very bizarre. Okay. Anyway. Uh, also, the other thing that happened this, a lot also, this happened was uh, part solid for cutting you off was a uh, friend and enemy of the program, Brandon Burns, put his stand up comedy on LimeWire and just said, because um, uh, Tim Renko, very funny comedian, first found Brandon Burns because he said the uh, comedian like, and then he put in brackets Bill Hicks, George Carlin. Da, 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 da. So people were doing that. Oh, real? Yes, this was the thing. Doug Stanhope also got a huge boost off of Napster and LimeWire because people that liked his comedy worked at Napster and just would file it under George Car like it would if you search George Carlin Doug Stanham would come up exactly that sort of thing the yeah, other and, thing and uh Chapp Dave Chappelle too like I remember like downloading entire seasons of the Chappelle show that type of thing this is the other thing is there's certain media that basically got in the rise of DVD and the rise of a, a bunch of sort of programs also spread through this there was also like odd things like scrubs had terrible ratings but huge penetration within college students because it was on LimeWire. Like the DVDs of that were on LimeWire, but the DVDs of Friends weren't. Like that's the other thing that's very interesting in um, the media you could get on LimeWire sort of encourage different things to be uh, discovered within uh, the society. Horrible things with LimeWire, such as since there was no security, people were literally just putting child porn in random folders. So people downloaded child porn and were arrested and jailed. Holy shit, really? Yeah, there's four or five cases of that. There was also a huge sort of internet-wide problem with a variety of different internet companies not policing child pornography because of the amount of usage they would use out of the platform, AOL being the best example of this. They were basically, like, AOL was profiting massively because they were leaving their computers on all the time to constantly be downloading um, all of the horrific, horrific images that they were sharing using uh, AOL Messenger. Uh, LimeWire was one and the same. There were a variety of cases where people said that they were using LimeWire as a way to trade and as a marketplace for those images, which is fucking horrific. And may all of the people involved in that die, die, die horribly. And Mark Gordon was like, it's just information, man. I, Mark Gordon, you cannot find any information of this guy speaking at all. All you can find is a, a photo of just a guy who looks like he'd be like, huh, is that your car? <laughs> I shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, and this just... is the thing. LimeWire is like starts in 2000. How quickly is it done? 2010, my friend. 2010. It, it is crazy how much longer it lasts. Now, I am so happy you brought that up. So this basically, um, <laughs> it LimeWire tries a little bit at certain points. They uh, start getting really, really harassed by Raya, which is, uh, as we've mentioned, basically just Raya was the grouping of um, mu um, record company labels that would basically get together and sue these uh, these um, peer to peer uh, sharing companies into bankruptcy. That's what happened to Kazaa. That's what happened to uh, Napster. And how LimeWire got away around it is they just kept me like, nah, though. And then just keep operating. This is building and building and building to what is called Arista V Lime Group. Now, what do you think was the number of the estimated damages that Arista was seeking against LimeWire? Dylan, I want you to guess and I want you to exaggerate. I want you to exaggerate the number. That's how high 15 trillion you are close in the trillion, but not close in the number. Are you ready? 30. Raya estimated that LimeWire owed them $72 trillion, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is sick. if you are doing the math at home, that would mean that every person on the planet downloaded 72 songs off of LimeWire. That's basically what they were trying to imply. It is insane. They uh, 
went after LimeWire. LimeWire at first um, uh, tried to police this by putting warnings up on its platform. Uh, that resulted in a variety of what are called uh, splits or forks off of the software. Someone just steals, hacks the software puts a completely different wrapping on it. Something that still exists to this day is one of these things that came from this time called Frostwire. And is one of the last peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sharing services on the internet that's not a bit torrent um, that is out there. Uh, this lawsuit goes on for years and years and years. It starts sort of in 2007, which is the first time that LimeWire probably uh, crapped out. And uh, we will tell you more about the LimeWire lawsuit, LimeWire's last days, what happened with Mark Gordon, and what LimeWire is doing now after the break. We are back. Uh, the record companies in the world have said that LimeWire owes them $72 trillion. That's fantastic. That's and like, I wonder why they didn't say 73. I, I love you so much. What a great point. Yeah, exactly. They were like, 70. I also like they didn't throw in a 0.5 because that would seem like that would be cunty. You know what I mean? <laughs> and 72.5. Uh, you owe us roughly all the money ever. Um, And it basically they and so what's very funny is this was a bit of a public relationship, public relations nightmare for the record companies. And here is why is they were still facing a uh, a market of people that were like, you fucked us for so long. Fuck you. And also that is so much money that it was, it was more than the amount of damages that sh like basically it gave LimeWire a bit of wiggle room. Cause they'd be like so ridiculous. You have to negotiate with us. And they ended up selling, settling for $105 million and LimeWire after three years was able um, to fucking juck and shuck and dive baby. Uh, and finally was forced to shut down. And I assume paid none of that money. The assumption is they paid none of that money. Not like none. I guarantee Mark Gordon was like, <laughs> I don't even use America. I only use euros. Like you understand like what the fuck it is insane. Is this dude from America or is he from? Mark Gordon is just an American businessman who went on to start a couple of things that he called mutual funds and other people involved in the Justice Department called not mutual funds, if you understand. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark Gordon rules, man. Like no, Mark uh, Gordon's one of those guys who I am surprised doesn't have a more in-depth Wikipedia page and doesn't have a Wikipedia page with an, a section marked controversies. You know what I'm saying? Like, Well, because he probably... He probably uh, monitors Mark Gordon's Wikipedia page. We know those I'm, people, those people who yeah. have Wikipedia pages, but like they clearly wrote it themselves. Uh, there and is recently his mom didn't uh, pay for his apartment, so she's a bitch now. I remember driving with a comedian and I the rumor was that person had made their own Wikipedia page. And I said, as we were driving to the Mississauga Yuck Yucks, RIP, I said, hey, you know, you can now see who's written people's wikipedia pages and he went what <laughs> <laughs> that's good oh, yeah. uh what i was gonna say the other thing about they have to take into account what this peer-to-peer -peer sharing stuff is so there's like there's a documentary about the fall of tower records that touches on this but the record companies made you buy an entire album because in the 50s 60s 70s 80s basically up to the 90s people would just buy singles because you just wanted to you just wanted you just ice wanted ice baby song. you don't want to yeah. fucking listen to vanilla ice's whole goddamn album yeah who they the were fuck like is... no you have to pay yeah. 20 bucks for all these other bullshit songs and it's also that sort of and it wasn't 20 bucks it was 20 bucks plus tax plus everything else plus the the reissue of plus you have to get the new technology like everything about it was incredibly expensive and it was entering into a period of time and people just said fuck it like no one had any sympathy it was just like, it was this very odd, decadent time. And it also created this time where like, no one talked about piracy. No one talked about it. And it was fuck like, it got to the point, you have to understand, LimeWire had more users than iTunes. I like the iPad, the iPod was the music delivery device yes. system of this time. The, like Apple was smart and that they went, we need to figure out a way to like, it was a storage device. I got a fucking, where... I broke out my old iPods. These were filled with stolen music, allegedly. <laughs> in Those theory, no but I yes. am not admitting on camera or in recording, but let's just say someone I know 
may have used LimeWire. <laughs> well, and you could always tell because it was like the Apple Music version of it was like artist da da da, and then just yeah, and then the stolen version of it was like, just track one. It was just track. It just said track, track one. one dot wave. Yeah, track one dot wave, but it was an MP3 file because it was just like some guy. I don't fucking know. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and then there was a lot of like this is like obviously like. Not Rick rolling, but you know, you'd download a video that you think was porn, but then it was just like someone else. Absolutely. Know, there were, there were all those different it. ads. There was that Bill Clinton. Hey, you. There were all these like, like, this was a weird time because it was also when Bill Clinton was a now hack impression. And it was, and also it was the time before we were like, well, Bill Clinton, a sex monster. It was just like, you just say Bill, you just, you just do Bill, hi, I'm Bill Clinton. You just do Bill Clinton's voice and then imply something gross. I was just picking my nose and putting it in a woman's pussy. Do you want to work at this bank? Like that, that was, that was I internet I did not humor. have sexual relations with that dog. Yeah, I didn't fuck that dog. I fucked Hillary, who is a dog or whatever. <laughs> That's funny. God, her. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. But yeah, you you download um or me. I mean, all I would download was just entire Comedy Central presents. Of course, like this that. Like okay, that's what I wanted to talk about. So, um, what did what was what what do you think? I don't think I would be into music as much as I am if it wasn't for LimeWire. This is the positive side of it. As I am a music door, well, I like. Yes weird bunches of stuff and it allowed me as a 20 year old to basically have at my fingertips the world's greatest record store and to get into all sorts of music you did not have access to and that is and will always be the great part of the internet is it was a connecting force you could find things it was all that sort of stuff but again the cost of that is none of those artists got paid um or were able to support themselves there was also at this period of time, no one knew those artists were popular. Like 30 Rock basically got renewed every year because people were like, I think people are watching this. I do not know. <laughs> yes. Well, you're completely right. And this is when um, I'm a bit into everything becomes into like a cliche. I like a yeah. bit of every music. It's like, yeah, you just because because you don't have to. You can totally take more risks when you you don't have to be like, hey, I. I think I might like James Brown. I'm going to pay 50 bucks and see if I like James Brown. No, you could just like a couple clicks. I like James yeah. Brown. Also, you didn't have the fucking mind meltingly annoying experience of going to a record store because everyone remembers fondly. Oh, the record store in the comic book shop with the surly employees. I remember being a 16 year old trying to buy music and comic books and having a full adult just be a shithead to you. Looking back was like, yeah, again, I'm glad those businesses shuttered. What terrible customer relations. Like, I re literally remember trying to buy an X-Men comic book, and I might have been 11, and the guy was like, X-Men, what are you fucking doing? You should be into, like, and he named some obscure thing, and I was like, let me fucking buy my comic, you fucking virgin. Get out of the way, man You're 11, who now doesn't. called him a virgin? No, this was all much later. In the moment, I was just oh, like, I'm but nervous. You came back years later and called him a virgin. No, I didn't come back. Near, I, the, the, me coming back years later is this podcast now. That's what I'm doing. Oh, you didn't get your revenge then. I did not. I Well, I think I got uh, a different type of revenge. I assume I didn't have to, I assume, participate in either the trucker rally or the January 6th protests. And I assume that gentleman did because all of the people I know that got really into music and comic books got... Went one of two ways in COVID, and either way, you're getting muted on social media, friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, LimeWire was around till 2010. You said when? It's around till it, 2010. When does it go? Uh, when when do the numbers go down? Like when? Do uh, okay. People, less so, people are using LimeWire because obviously the Pirate Bay takes over, which is like, like you said, like BitTorrent. These sites are much more comprehensive. Where LimeWire, it's like. For, for LimeWire, for those of you that are younger and didn't use it, it was like single track. So it's like you you would you download in the entire, uh, you know, 2001, but you have to, you know, still drive, forgot about Dre separately versus like the Pirate Bay is like, click everything Dr. Dre has ever done. I will go have a sandwich and oh, my God, I can listen to everything. Completely. So Pirate Bay and BitTorrent. The, the culture of BitTorrent's demonoid. I was also on Oink. If you guys don't know what Oink was, Oink was a music only. 
I don't want to know what oink is, John. I don't want to have to fucking answer in front of the Supreme Court about it was, oink. That sounds it was disgusting. A music, music only BitTorrent service that had no, it when, wasn't. Yes, it was. No it was. It was. It was. It was. I'm listen. I'm. I was as shocked as you. Uh, it was invite only. I was one of the people that I was. Uh, I was one of the hundred and eight. The 180,000 users and it had every music ever i still have album it was the like everything it like supreme studio quality no and it was literally like no exe files it was the only place where you literally like you would just see like it was the best i, I miss it so much there were like particular users you'd follow because they were just i assume stealing from a tower records <laughs> oh yeah the people who had seed they yes. seed your stuff and it was like wow there's like one guy who just really hates the whole record industry so all of those torrent websites were absolutely in response to limewire and here's why so limewire's peak years of user were 2004 2005 2006 2007 and then they get slapped with uh, the uh, riaa web uh, lawsuits yeah. that they actually have to respond to that's the 70 that's the 72 trillion year and that's when that starts but bit, the reason why Pirate Bay, Demonoid, all of those took over is, A, you could make them invite only, which is what Demonoid and Oink did, uh, or you could just be like Pirate Bay and continually change your URL. But essentially what they were doing was by not being software is they could make an argument saying, we're not storing this anywhere. We're literally just an online storage facility like Dropbox or WeTransfer. So now they have a legal argument against the uh, copyright infringement lawsuits that they would bring in the United States in the way that Limeware does not because there is another legal purpose for the software Pirate Bay is using so they could get away around that legal issue for a bit and then they didn't and also were taken down. So uh, uh, in 2007, they have moments uh, where service is completely disrupted because of the Raya lawsuit. And th so that affected user numbers at LimeWire. They also, for a time, had to police copyrighted um, um, content on LimeWire, and that affected its user base. And all of those people poured over to BitTorrents because it was, again, a even better user experience than even LimeWire was because there was even less risk of viruses and stuff like that because BitTorrent, you could literally see the files being formed, all that sort of stuff as it was being put onto your computer. But it show, you had to have slightly more computer literacy to use BitTorrents than you did for uh, LimeWire. And that, again, shaved off more people, leading more people to just simply use iTunes. And we eventually get to where we are now, uh, which is where streaming is basically making no money, but is popular. Yes, I this. is Yeah, this I'm just reading something now about Amazon and about how e-commerce like also kind of makes no money. And the only way to make money is like brick and mortar stores. But they're yeah. just kind of enduring e-commerce so they can build their brick and mortar stores anyway. Maybe we shouldn't have come up with the Internet. Um. Yeah, I don't think the Internet has <laughs> maybe <laughs> not been the best thing for ch for good. The other thing is very interesting is user patterns and user behaviors change because of things like LimeWire. Mm -hmm. And they get catered to, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's actually what user behavior is. The fact I have downloaded the entire discography of the Buena Vista Social Club does not mean I like the Buena Vista Social Club. It just means that I like stealing. And that is the other thing that I think streaming and online media platforms have kind of missed is a lot, they, there was this expectation that like, um, we would move away from singles into people wanting complete albums and stuff like that. And all that Spotify and everything and all of this has taught us is human beings have not changed. We like our music. We like like four pop. Most people like the four popular songs that would like access to them. And besides that, they don't care. It's just to change to we would occasionally have to buy a $20 album to now we all pay $9 a month to either a California based company that doesn't pay its taxes or royalties to its artists or to a Swedish-based company that doesn't pay uh, taxes or royalty to its artists. Either way, and this is very important, we have to make sure the artists aren't being paid. That's the one thing I want everyone to take away from this podcast. If you are creative, fuck you. You get no fucking money. Fuck yeah. you. Your payment is that people think you have a nice shirt. Get the fuck out of here, pussy. Yeah, exactly. Your payment is that people think that you probably have had slightly more sex than they have. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you get People think your hair is cool. But yeah, th this is the other thing is you would download. I remember doing this. It's pathetic, but you would download entire albums just so you. it's kind of like a bookshelf. You'd be like, 
oh yeah i have all of the velvet underground i'm never gonna fucking listen to it because it's boring but i'll download it so uh, here's someone the thing. sees it and goes like oh i guess he likes the albums you're supposed to like and the positive side of that was people like me who actually did get into the velvet underground and then became a more uh, well-rounded and learned person unlike dylan who is literally not wearing any trousers right now because he's icing his yeah, balls i'm wearing he, shorts because i'm a grown man i'm not a pirate first of all first of all i am also wearing shorts Let, it's june and we're white men of course trousers. we're wearing shorts Good we're wearing i'm wearing shorts sir. also oh, here's God. the other thing oh, about the velvet underground Lou Reed's a pussy. They're all fucking losers. You're a pussy. Shut the fuck up. Fuck you. Fuck you. The Velvet Underground out here. And then if you clicked on that song, what would play? Ba would a ba. That would be every single song. I mean, of course, that would be an improvement. But everything is an improvement if you include Kid Rock. Oh, Dylan, sidebar. And this is an internet program. So here's a little video recommendation from John Hastings. Kid Rock's tour of his house. He bought a hill near Nashville yeah. and built a replica of the White House that he now lives in. Yeah, with gold toilets. It's got gold toilets. It's got a bowling alley. He gets into an argument with one of his friends because they're like, you should have put a gun range in here. And he's like, we got a forest to shoot guns. It's a bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what I love. Thing. I love that guy because um, he's just a guy who is a rich dude from Michigan who's pretending to be a poor dude from the southern United States. God bless him. That is the United States, by the way. And also, I, no one, the, the U.S. is so fucked up because no, the, you're like, Man, it doesn't seem like America values its history. And it's like, no, America cannot discuss its history because all of the historical places also were built by, maintained by, and are just in the middle of where slaves were. So they're just like, would y'all shut the fuck? It's so, the South is, and I got to stress this, nuts. Like, you're just like, <laughs> what is the fuck is going on here? Like, why is that? Okay, first of all, I'm going to say this right now. Why is that man wearing a Confederate flag T-shirt helping that old black lady cross the street? And they're like, "What? What? Why is that confusing to you?" And I'm like, "What side is he on? What side is he on, bro? Like, what the fuck?" I'll never forget be driving to a comedy club. These were the directions: uh, take this highway. You're gonna see a really big Confederate flag. Go left there. We're the first town. And when I saw the, it was literally the side of a mountain painted to be a Confederate flag. And I went, "It's a big Confederate flag." And then I drove to the town and he said, you didn't get lost. And I went, no. And I went, um, good directions. Weird to mention the Confederate flag. And he was like, you have to mention it. It's so big. If I didn't, you, you'd be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And I was like, you're right, bro. <laughs> well, I would have, I would have been confused because I'd be like, oh, that's a mountain painted with a Confederate flag. So I'll just keep it on driving. Interesting. Yeah. I would have been like yeah. the mountain with really? the flag on it. That's what I would have thought. Anyway. Um so LimeWire, LimeWire finally has to close in 2010, and I assume the user base just keeps on bleeding out. The yeah, the user base, the user base had long moved over to torrents or FrostWire, or had unable to use their computer because they downloaded a bunch of viruses and then didn't get another computer because they're <laughs> 10. Uh, and Mark Gordon went on to again uh, be accused of other things through lawsuits, and you can't really find him on the internet anymore. Um, LimeWire was basically the Napster gets all the credit of being Napster is the Elvis of peer to peer file sharing music stealing software. LimeWire is the Beatles without them. I don't think we have BitTorrents in the way that we have. I don't think that streaming music or videos is as thirsted upon by our generation because we all spent our college years absolutely butt fucking media empires and stealing <laughs> billions of dollars from them, from our homes, from our homes. Like this is, again, this is the crazy thing of, this is when it became the time, never turn your computer off, always be downloading. And as much as internet companies probably now send threatening emails, never forget, this was a time when your internet usage was predicated based on like download speeds and how much you're downloaded. That's when this all started. And fuck me, did they probably make some fucking money off of this? Yeah, it just changes on who makes the money, I suppose. Exactly correct. And again, and this is the whole portion and point of this show. As long as the people that created the art do not make the money, I'm happy. That's the main thing and main takeaway. Is as long as the person who made the joke or the song or played the guitar or painted the painting, I want them to be poor. And I want all of the dorks around them, people in Oxford shirts that say things like, <laughs> totally, I want them to be getting royalties. <laughs> Speaking of... We're two weeks away from launching our fucking Patreon, you bitch pussies. 
Take so, off your trousers and put on shorts. No whoa. people wearing trousers can join our Patreon. That's right. Mark Gordon, that means you. You seem like the kind of guy that loves a chino that's ironed. <laughs> Iron your pants and join our Patreon in a couple weeks. We'll have back catalog of the wrestler review episodes, or you can just not listen to that and listen to all of the episodes of this show, John and Dylan online, early access to those and extra episodes that we'll be posting regularly that where we're just talking shit and talking piss. Thank you guys so much for listening next week. We are doing Logan Paul, baby. He made fun of people suicides. He has a boxing company and a cryptocurrency scam. I fucking hate Logan Paul, and I'm happy. Dude, this is I'm the best thing about him. He's, he's involved research. in like six fucking scams. I know. This is the best. Also, like, how much do you know about Big Mike? Uh, let me ask you this, Dylan. Zero. You are you are aware that I got really into watching Logan Paul's podcast in the middle of the pandemic? Like, no, I am not. Oh, I, I got. Re- I got really into it. Here is a little. I was uh, I was alone in Los Angeles and shit was weird. A couple of things you all got to remember. Big Mike is his weird sort of sidekick on that podcast. He briefly dated porn star Lana Rhodes and used to try and cheat on her by messaging girls. You want to get into porn? I'm dating the queen. You got to go through me first. What the fuck are you doing, bro? Second of all, Logan Paul's crypto scam is so. It is so a scam. Please just go re- read about crypto zoo. It is like it's awesome. I want to be that type of scammer. Just download this thing. And then God we bless. Get we should something. all be so lucky as to move to a place with different tax laws and wonderful stuff. Next mm-hmm. week is Logan Paul. Thank you guys so much for listening. Remember to if you don't want to join the Patreon, rate and subscribe and review five stars. It'll help us out. It'll help our families. Thanks so much for listening. Goodbye. One last thing. If you are Mark Gordon, which I assume you are. Uh, Thank you so much for listening to this whole show and know that I think you are a cunt, but I don't think that you um, did any crimes because if I thought that and you could sue me, I don't want you to sue me. Don't sue me, Mark.